Good morning. It is Wednesday, January 12th, and I'm Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray the message this morning will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul. It's probably the epitome of of the riches of God's grace in the revelation concerning the church, the body of Christ. And it's all to the praise of his glory through the marvelous message of Jesus Christ as head of the church, which is his body. And so let's begin here with Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And so here we're encountering some phrases, the old man and the new man. And this concept, this revelation of truth concerning the believer, again, is found only in the revelation given to the Apostle Paul called the gospel of the grace of God. And so my faith, reading these verses, and we spoke a little bit about the translation last week, and we're going to address another translation issue this week, as far as I'm concerned, a translation issue. But my faith reads these verses saying, but this is not what you have learned concerning Christ. Now you have heard him, and in him you were taught according to the truth that is in Jesus. When we trusted Christ, we were baptized by the Spirit of God into Christ and into Christ's body. Being baptized into Christ is salvation. Being baptized into the body of Christ is our existence today. We live totally in Christ. That is our life today. And then going on to verse 22, that ye put off concerning the farmer, former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in your mind, in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on that new man, Put on Christ, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, it's not Christ himself, because he's not a created being. But God is creating today an entity called the church, the body of Christ. And that is the new man. And we'll get into this in a little more depth next week. But right now, I'd like to just focus in on some of this terminology that we're encountering. And so the epistles which Paul wrote were written to the members of the body of Christ. And that marvelous truth gives us tremendous insight so that we might understand God's plan and purpose for us and how we can walk worthy of our calling. And so it is so critical to understand and to prove oh, be, to be a workman who rightly divides the word of truth. And this is part of that aspect. And so the old man, this phrase occurs in Paul's writings in Romans chapter 6, in verse 6, knowing this, 
that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Of course, it was crucified with Christ. When you believed the gospel, the Apostle Paul says, For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Colossians 3 9, Paul says, Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And then the term new man is also a Pauline revelation given to him by the exalted Lord Jesus Christ from heaven. In Ephesians 2.15, we read, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Making in himself one new man. This again, this one new man that's being created by God in righteousness and true holiness is the church the body of christ and so here it says he's make in himself of twain referring to the jews and the gentiles this is not as the old covenant arrangement where israel was the chosen people of god it's not the new covenant where Israel, being the chosen nation of God, will reign over the Gentiles here on earth. This is one new man, where Jew and Gentile are brought together into the church, the body of Christ, through the gospel of salvation, which is, Christ has died for your sins. Believe him believe in him trust in him just knowledge of the fact that christ died for your sins doesn't save faith saves trusting in jesus christ believing that he paid the price for you and your sins last past and present and future are all paid for and done away with forever. The sin issue in regards to your relationship with God has been forever taken care of through the blood of Christ. And when you believe, God forgives you all of your trespasses. And so now there is no place in the church today, the body of Christ, to say, I'm a Jewish Christian or I'm a Methodist, or I'm a Gentile. I mean, those things may be true, but as far as the church, the body of Christ is concerned, there is no difference in any of them. We are all one in Christ. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10 and 11. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. In other words, again, we have, through faith, being saved by grace, have become members of the body of Christ. We have enveloped ourselves by the grace of God. We have been enveloped would be a better way to say it. God has placed us into the church, the body of Christ, into the new man. And when God looks at me today, he sees me not in my experience in life, but in my position, in my existence in Christ, who is my righteousness. 
I have no innate righteousness. We should know that. There's none righteous, no, not one. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But in Christ I am credited, accounted as righteous. All through faith in the perfect work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, where he bore my sins in his body on that cross. And when anyone not just knows that, but believes it and trusts in it, they are saved, sealed, and secured for all eternity. And again, I talk to so many people one particularly is fresh in my mind just this week. I talked to a person and I asked them, we were talking about the Lord and Christ and being a Christian and all that. And I asked, do you think you'll go to heaven? Oh, I'm sure. And I said, well, why? And never once did that person indicate they had any knowledge whatsoever of the importance of the sacrifice of Christ for their sins? Their response to me was, well, I go to church, I treat people good, I, I, I. And when I got all done, I said, all you have mentioned are things that you have done and works of righteousness. And the Bible is so clear that works of righteousness will not get us salvation. It's by grace through faith in the cross work of Christ. But in the, in the new man, it goes on to say in verse 10, Colossians 3, 11 now, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And so that eliminates every distinction. If you have trusted Christ, I don't care if you're Irish, Norwegian, Norwegian, Catholic, Methodist, or anything else, we are one in Christ. And so any peripheral additions are really meaningless and oftentimes divisive. So, also another, I think, important point is the old man today is often, I believe, wrongly identified and associated with a non-biblical phrase termed old nature. Many of you have probably heard something like this, the old nature. And now you have another non-biblical term. Now you have a new nature. And I think that is biblically incorrect. Now some of the concepts associated with it are close to the old man and the new man. But they really miss the point. And so I was taught... And at the time, it did sound logical about, I have an old nature and a new nature now. And whichever one I choose to serve will be the dominant force in my life. And that's just, now I understand, horrible scripture, horrible doctrine. It cannot be supported in the scriptures whatsoever. And so you too may have been taught this way, but I no longer embrace it. And I, if anyone can provide to me any biblical support for this old nature, new nature, and about which one you serve and all of that, if anybody can provide me any biblical support for that idea, I would really appreciate it. And so my faith is that the old man is identifying the first Adam and relates to our existence and experience prior to salvation. We were born 
dead in trespasses and sins because we were born into the very family of Adam and Eve in the earthly family. Every person born in that manner is conceived in sin and sinful from birth. And so similarly, uh, the new man is identifying us now with the Lord Jesus Christ and relates to our existence and our experience in him in the body of Christ, which is today the church. And it is from this position that I understand another verse that I think is critical. So much of the misinterpretation of the Bible comes from not rightly dividing the word of truth, not seeing the distinctiveness of Israel's gospel for earth and the very distinctiveness of the gospel that was revealed to the Apostle Paul for the heavens. And as Gentiles, that is primarily, and today it is solely, our gospel and our message. And so the message for us today as members of the church, the body of Christ, as to how we should live our lives and how we are made right with God is different than the message in the Old Testament and in the Gospels. Jesus Christ never taught anybody while he was here on this earth about how to live today in the church, the body of Christ. That's one of the critical things to understand in all of this. And so, uh, Going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, there is no evidence whatsoever, no testimony I have ever seen of any of the translators of the Bible that profess to see the distinctiveness of Paul's revelation or the fact that it was a secret until it was revealed. And so, therefore, I believe that the translators were biased under the old covenant arrangement, under the teachings of Christ, and therefore oftentimes translated scriptures according to their faith or their understanding, and they were pretty much all in agreement with it. And so here, to help us better understand this passage, they inserted some words. And I don't think anybody will debate that statement. Uh, in our Bibles, in the King James Bible, these words are usually in italics, meaning they aren't in the manuscripts, but we're adding them to clarify what was being said. And so here, if you look at your Bible, the, the word be, if any, therefore, if any man be in Christ, the word be is not there. Likewise, he is a new creation. He is, is not in the manuscripts. And so therefore, I believe that they have, in their effort sincerely to translate what they thought was being said, added those words to help other people when they read the Bible. But it is my opinion that by the addition of these words, they have confused or hidden what was really being explained. Now, we've talked about the old man and the new man here today, and we'll continue that, Lord willing, next week. But just in regards to this passage, I would like to point out that if I were to translate this, since he is is not there, I would translate this in this fashion. If anyone be in Christ, in the new creation, 
which is the body of Christ, the new man. It's not he is a new creation, but the new creation is the new man. The new creation is the body of Christ that God is creating today. And if any man be in that new creation, old things have passed away. All that you were through your birth in Adam, the instant you trust Christ as your Savior, those things are all done away with. And then you all things are become new. You're under a new relationship with God called standing in grace. In, in Romans chapter 5 and verses 1 and 2 it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have access by grace, or access, I think, to God by the grace in which we stand. And so we today have a new relationship with God totally in grace. And what a glorious message that is. There's no indication in the scriptures that when I get saved, God obliterates who I am by nature. I remain the same person by nature. But my existence has changed from being in Adam to now being in Christ. And so all things are become new. You are now in Christ, the new man. It is through understanding this revelation that we are instructed then to put off the old man, the way we used to live. The conversation means the manner of life, the way you behave. To no longer behave that way because that's not who you are today in Christ. And that's such a revelation which we will talk about next week. Uh, Lord willing, we'll pick this up again, but I want to mention, I'm going to add, uh, besides my notes this week, I'm going to add also another page talking about, here's our existence in Adam, before we were saved, and now here's what we are in Christ. So one is what we were in the old man, and now what we are in the new man, in Christ. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you with overwhelming gratitude and thanksgiving for the marvelous gospel of your grace and for the privilege to have insight into this mystery that you had kept secret from before the creation of the world, but now has made known through your apostle, the apostle Paul, for the Gentiles, the church the body of Christ. And so we thank you for that and for the privilege of having insight into that truth. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.